you, Brother Gomer. Shall we stand up, please, and we will pray as we have already read our text for today. I would like to ask uh, Brother Matthew to please uh, pray for the uh, message today, please. She may be seated. So I, uh, I, I believe I've already preached this uh, message, but I can also see that this is a fitting uh, follow-up to what we have studied yesterday regarding uh, becoming matured and discerning and skillful in using the Word of God. As we were encouraged and challenged yesterday regarding that we need to grow into maturity and become teachers and to stop being a babe in Christ or carnal. Because we saw that all a carnal Christian can do is baby talks. And they cannot really uh, encourage people, work for the Lord, glorify God. And they cannot use the word of God in order to answer every man a question pertaining the hope that we have in our Christian life. So that is very uh, sad, tragic, and unbecoming because we are called witnesses of the Lord. And as a witness, all we have to do is to herald what the Lord did in our lives to proclaim the gospel and to tell the good news into all the world so that people who are lost in darkness will have a chance to repent of their sins, open up their hearts, and receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, which is the most important thing that a man can have or a man should do because the Bible says, what shall it profit a man? Even if he gained the whole world and suffered the loss of his own soul. So because of these verses, we need to understand that what was given to us is the most important task in this world. We can say that in the Philippines that our Senate as well as our Congress is facing a very important decision in the life or history, political history of the Philippines because of the Asogi Bill. So many Christians and LGBT community are reacting to this. But may I tell you today that what was given to us is more important than that. What was given to us is more important in magnitude than what is about to be passed or what is about to be rejected in the Philippines. Because all those things can, you know, if affect some of our rights, it can affect some people, but what we're doing will affect a person all throughout eternity. Once they got saved, it will be theirs forever, and once they are lost, they will be in hell forever. So that is the reason why we cannot afford to remain baby in Christ, but we have to grow. We have to mature. We have to become skillful in using the Word of God, and we need to be discerning so that we will know what is right and evil, so that we will know what is truth and error. In doing so, then we can be an effective servant of the Lord. So yesterday, if you will remember, I emphasized this, and as I have said a while ago, maybe I have already preached this, but the timing is so important that I have to uh, preach this again today, if I've already preached it before. I told you that in order to do all of these things, we must have something in us, and we call that a testing mindset. That we need to be in a constant mindset of testing everything that we are hearing from the Word of God. You see, there are people who can be very smooth in their talk. They can be very slick in what they're saying. And most of the time, these things are good to hear, but the question is, are they biblical? Can we found them? Can we find them in the Word of God? So you see, no matter how good uh, a thing is, if it is not according to the Word of God, 
then it is something that Christians should reject. It is something that we should not do in our lives. Why? Because we are of God and all we need to do is to obey the Word of God. Anything that goes against the Bible or the Word of God is of the devil. Anything that is against the Word of God is not from him. So that is the reason why we are being led astray. We are drifting away because we are so fond of you know, raising sometimes people's words and tradition and, and many other things more than the Word of God. So if we are going to have this testing mindset, then it will considerably help us in our Christian life so that we will grow in the grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the way of discernment is the way of spiritual protection, blessing, and fruit. There is no way that we will be protected without the Word of God. The Word of God is our buckler. It is our haven of rest. It is our shield. It is our protection. Without the Word of God, we will know what to do in this world. Without the Word of God, we will walk in darkness. The Bible says, The entrance of thy word giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. It is our lamp. It is our guide. It is our protection. And without which, we would not know what to do in this life, let alone find salvation from the Lord. So this is our protection. Discerning the Word of God is our blessing. The only way that we can be blessed is if we obey the Word of God. And there is no way that we can obey God's Word if we do not know God's Word. Amen. There is no way that we can do the will of God if we are not going to know the will of God. And there is no way that we are going to be blessed if we will not walk in the counsel of the Word of God. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. You see, there are so many ungodly people, but they are smart. There are so many ungodly people, but they are intellectual. There are so many ungodly people, but they are good in what we call inspiring so many people. And there is a danger that if we are not skillful in the Word of God, we may not even know the difference about what they're saying. If it is according to God's Word or not. That is why we are blessed if we take counsel from the Word of God. That is what the Bible says. That is what our text says. And then discerning the word of God is the way to be fruitful in the ministry. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ says that if we will abide in the word of God and the word of God will abide in us, then we are going to be fruitful in everything that we do. In Joshua 1.8, we already know this, that this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night and then we're going to do something it's going to be prosperous and it's going to have good success so the reason why we are not fruitful is we're not doing things according to the word of God and according to the way of God many many times we are so self-willed that we want to do things our way and if we are not discerning of God's word then we may not even know the difference. So that is why in our time today, it is popular to say that careful testing of everything by God's word is Phariseeism and legalism. When you have this kind of mindset, people will uh, tell you that you are like a Pharisee, that you are a legalist, that you are doing hate speech, and you are becoming judgmental. Why? Because people wanted to be uh, not to be rebuked and whatever they say, they just want people to accept it because it came from them. Like for example, the LGBT community, we love these people ladies and gentlemen. We do not hate them. There is not a single cell of hate in my heart for these people but love, care, that is why we preach the word to every creature. And they are part of God's creation. And because the Lord Jesus Christ died for them. 
The Lord Jesus Christ so loved them. The Lord Jesus Christ uh, gave his life for these people. His uh, shed blood was also for these people. And that is the reason why every Christian should love these people. But sad to say, these people are trying to close the door that God wanted to keep open for them that they may see the love and the goodness of God. We love them. We want them to be saved. We want them to come into the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But whenever we say something against sin, they are taking it personal. That is the problem of the world today. You are trying to be objective, but they are continually becoming subjective to everything that we say. That is why when you say something against the sin of homosexuality, they will take it personal. When you test things and found out that it is according, not according to the Bible, even though it was taught behind the pulpit, then we are being judged as judgmental. Can you see the irony? We are being judged as judgmental. They are the one judging us while they are being judged by the Word of God. And the Word of God is a judge. The Word of God is the one that will test everything. John chapter 12, 48, 8, if I'm not mistaken, can we flash that please? In John 12, 48. Meron ba na? He that rejected me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. Who judge people? It is not me. It is not our church. It is not you. He that rejected me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken the same shall judge him in the last day. So when we say it is a sin, it is not because it is our opinion. So when we say it is wrong, it is not because that's how we feel about it. When we say it is wrong, when we say it is sin, it is because it can be found in the Word of God. Amen? So that is why we need to have a testing mindset so that everything that we say, everything that we do is according to God's Word. That we can be safe from becoming subjective in the things that are happening in this world. You see, it is condemned by modern society and by modern churches, but it is praised by God. Having a testing mindset is going to be dangerous to many people. Why? Because they know that everything that they say may be scrutinized according to the Word of God. And that goes both ways. Even what I'm saying today can be tested by you according to God's word. If it is only my opinion, then there is no authority whatsoever there. If it is only my feeling, then there is no authority whatsoever there. If it is only according to my philosophy, then there is no authority. But listen to me, brothers and sisters, when I say something according to the word of God, then do it because we are under the authority of God. You do not have the right to say no to God. You do not have the right to disobey God. We do not have the right to go against the will of God. When God said it, that settles it. Do it and glorify God. That is what we need to do. That is why having this mindset is very important. And actually, that is what really matters. I don't care what, whatever they will say against me. I don't care what the world will think about me. What I care is what God will say to me. When I, face, when, when I am uh, in His presence and facing Him at the judgment seat of Christ. You see, the foundation for a testing mindset is a strong knowledge of God. You need to have a strong knowledge of the Word of God. We emphasized that yesterday, amen? We emphasized that. It is very sad and it is very shameful for a Christian to not know the Word of God. 
it is a shame and it is something that is unbecoming for a Christian not to be skillful in using the word of God because this is our only weapon of offense given, given to us by God most of our weapons are defensive but this is the only one that we can wield and attack the enemy with and it is so sad and tragic if a Christian, so called Christian child of God will not know the word of God actually the truth of the matter is this if we are saved we have the Holy Spirit in our hearts amen and if the Holy Spirit is in our hearts the Holy Spirit will always crave for the word of God so if you or me do not have a desire for the word of God then maybe there is no Holy Spirit in my heart in the first place Pastor, ang ko sabihin, lumalaki mo nga, pag wala kang desire sa word of God, hindi ka safe. Pero tumanggap ako sa iyo, tinanggap mo. Kung ang Holy Spirit ang tinanggap mo, the Holy Spirit is the greatest teacher and the textbook of the Holy Spirit is the Bible. How can the Holy Spirit teach you if you have no desire for the Bible and how can you have no desire for the word of God if you have the Holy Spirit in your heart? That is simply not possible. Amen? So that is the reason why it is very important. Look at what the Bible says. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law that he meditate day and night. You see, the psalmist says that I love the word of God more than my necessary food. He says that even if I will not eat, I'm going to read the word of God. Even if I will not eat, I will study the Word of God. Even if I will not eat, I am going to meditate upon the Word of God. Why? It is more important than my necessary food. You see, if given a choice, he would rather read the Word of God than eat his meal. That is how a Christian should have a, that Christian's attitude towards the Word of God. It is necessary to know God's word, but not only to know it, but to delight in it. Because there is a difference between knowing something and delighting in something that you know. When there is delight, there is zealousness. When there is delight, there is enthusiasm. You know that every Sunday is the time that we should gather together. You know that. But if you delight in coming every Sunday, then you will come early, you will come every time, you will be here and listening, ready, enthusiastic for the Word of God. Yeah. That is the difference between just knowing that this is the Word of God and loving, delighting in the Word of God. When you delight, when you have delight on a person, then you will be fond of that person. Same thing with the Word of God. So not only that we need to know it, but to delight in it, and it is necessary to read and study it, but also to meditate therein day and night. I already told you that and emphasized that yesterday. As a preacher, we always prepare lessons, messages, and this is how we usually do it. We read the Word of God, and we read the Word of God, and read it again, for as many times as possible, and then we outline what we have read, you cannot outline without understanding it. And then you will put that outline. First, the outline will be there. We, do not, we may not have our sub-points yet. But as we go through the day, it is in our mind. We're thinking about it. We are rehearsing that in our mind. And then after a while, we will sit down and, and put those things that the Lord is uh, placing in our mind in order to develop that preaching. And then we sit down and, and rewrite it and use concordance or commentary or uh, other uh, thoughts of men regarding that. And we discern these things and then put it all together. And then we will go through the day the same thing. And sometimes we even dream about it. You, we even dream about it until Saturday or Sunday comes then we are going to preach it. Why? Because we meditate upon it 
day and night. So it is a picture of a child of God who loves God's word above honey, above fine gold. Look at Psalms chapter 19, verse number 10. Psalms 19, 10. More to be desired are they than gold. My. Given a choice, the Bible or gold, what will you choose? Gold. <laughs> and, uh, and that, that is just, just being uh, honest. <laughs> you see, I, I have here a, golden neck, a gold necklace and I have a, a Bible. Which one do you like? A pastor already have a Bible. <laughs> I'd rather have that gold. More to be desired. Are they than gold? Yea, than much fine gold. Kay 25 carat pa yan. Even if you're offered 25 carat gold, which is not existing. But you need to desire the word of God more than that. Sweeter also than honey. And the honeycomb. Honey is a staple food during that time. And honey is very important for survival during that time. But they say that I like God's word more than these things. Why? It shows that you love the word of God. And listen to me. If you will love the word of God, then God will love you. Because he is the living word of God. Amen? He's going to love us. We are going to see the goodness of God in our lives. But we are not only in, should not only be intellectually satisfied with the word of God, but we must really love it. You see, some people are studying, testing, all of these things in order to, to have a, an intellectual advantage over other people and then use it to lord it over them. Or use it to show that they are superior than other people. Listen, the attitude is this. The more God is entrusting you with his truth, the more, hum the more humble we should be. That even though we are not worthy, God has entrusted unto us his precious, precious word. And only this type of relationship with God and his word will protect, will bless, and will cause us to have fruits in the ministry. You see, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. Most of what we are doing or our accomplishment are only the fruit of the flesh. It is not the fruit of the spirit. It is not because the Holy Spirit is working in us. It is maybe because of our charisma, if you are charismatic. It is maybe because of your intellect, if you are intelligent. Maybe it is a result of your uh, ability if you're a cunning person but most of the time it is not the result of our uh, a close and pure relationship with God and his word because most of the time we do things according to our way according to how we look at it so that we can attract people and convince people according to our style and not really according to the word of God you see, sometimes that is our problem. That's why our fruits are not remaining. Our fruits are not persevering. They are not continuing. They easily wither away. And not really lingering unto, etern at, unto eternity. So the man of God measures everything by God's word. And rejects every counsel and every way that is contrary to God's word. This is our litmus paper. This is the litmus test of everything that we hear in this word. And everything that we hear behind the pulpit. Look at Psalms 119 verse 128. Psalms 119 verse number 128. The Bible says, Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning... All things to be right. Number one, listen. You need to be convinced that the word of God is absolutely right. You need to believe that. Because if you cannot believe that every word of God is absolutely right, then you have no final 
authority in any matter of life. It must be all or nothing. But pastor, I believe 90% of God's word is right. How can you know the 10% that is wrong? Who are you to judge what is right? And who are you to judge what is wrong? If the final authority or uh, the, the, the uh, book that we're supposed to, to uh, lay all of our foundation and become the basis of our belief is 10% wrong. How can we know that? So we need to steam all the precepts concerning all things to be right. That the word of God is 100% true, correct, right, and dependable. Amen? That's why I wonder why people believe in this uh, pastor who said that the rendering of the King James Bible is in uh, uh, the word church is wrong and then still use the King James Bible you don't correct the word of God the word of God corrects you Amen. you do not change the word of God the word of God changes you and you cannot put the word of God to test the word of God will test you that is something that we need to understand the psalmist esteemed all of God's word to be right. And this is the foundation for a testing mindset. How can you test something from something that is not right? There must be an absolute uh, word of God that we can test everything with. The believer has an absolute standard of truth. This is what the Lord Jesus Christ says in John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. It is not false. Amen. It is true. John chapter 10, verse 35. Not only that it is true, but the Bible says it cannot be broken if we call them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken there is nothing that you can do when the Bible said it it will happen you cannot break it they said that when the king says something it must happen well this is what the king of kings and the lord of lords uttered and nobody can stop it it cannot be broken and not only that, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19, it is so authoritative that it is a light in darkness. So the only reason why people are living in darkness is because they do not heed the word of God. But if we will heed the word of God, then we will be walking in the light as he is in the light. Amen? He says, I am the light of the world. And we are the light of this world. So that is why it is very important to esteem the word of God as all truthful and nothing is false about it. Let's go back to Psalms 119, 128. Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right and I hate every false way. So the psalmist hated every false way. The child of God should be passionate about this. The psalmist hatred of false ways was a reflection of his love for the word of God. So anything that is against the word of God must be hated by Christians. That's why we hate sin. Amen. We do not hate the sinner. Because the sinner are once we are like them and the Lord Jesus Christ died for us when we were yet sinners. So we do not like what they're doing and we hate their false ways, their sinful ways. That's why we do not hate the homosexuals. We hate what they're doing. We, 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 we don't love that they're having sex with their same sex we, we do not like what they want to 
do that they're going to marry the same sex we do not want uh, what they're doing and we hated it every bit when they mocked the Lord Jesus Christ during their gay pride and they're going to, to uh, adorn them, themselves like the Lord Jesus Christ and they will kiss each other and they're throwing so many things against the Lord Jesus Christ we hated that but we love them because they're blinded and if they're not going to change then they're going to hell and we do not want that to happen but they're insisting on going to hell then taking the grace that God has given them so that is their choice but we will keep on preaching to them we will keep on teaching them the word of God but what they wanted to do right now is to pass a law wherein it will prohibit us from preaching the word of God to them because once you do that you will be in jail and you will be fined a sizable amount for preaching the word of God so we hated that and that is why we are against that bill and that is why we're saying things against that why we're testing it it is not according to the word of God and if it is not according to God's word then we hated it the psalmist was not on the fence you see that is something that we cannot afford to do to sit on the fence it is either or it is you are on the Lord's side or on the devil's side it is either you believe the truth and love the truth or love every false way it is either you are for the word of God or against the word of God it is either you're going to obey God or you're going to disobey God this theme has been through the word of God remember Joshua challenging the people and saying as for me and my house we will serve the Lord remember Moses when he went down from Mount Sinai carrying the word of God he says who is on the Lord's side let them come to me and those who did not were swallowed by the earth do you remember when Elijah was standing there on top of, the, of Mount Carmel when he said how long had she between two opinions if God be God then serve him if Baal then serve Baal this has been ringing through the word of God and we cannot afford to sit on the fence we cannot be compromisers in this hour in this day because we are living in the last days amen so he cast his vote for God's word in every matter and that is also my vote and he stood seriously opposed to anything that is contrary to God's word and that is what I want to do he did not make excuse for error he hated it he did not treat error as a small thing did you see well because I'm just a man I'm only human that's why I'm doing it even if he did it he said I hated it because it is according to the word of God and I'm not going to make any excuse if I did it then I did it I am wrong and God deal to me as he said according to his word so that is why it is very important to test everything in the word of God why anything that is not according to the word of God is of the devil look at Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20 to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word it is because there is no light in them everything that is not according to God's word is darkness amen if it is darkness it is of the devil if it is of the devil it is deceiving and it will imprison you in error and if you remain in that error then it will cost you your eternity so the Old Testament saints were to test everything by the scripture that they had of course the Old Testament but the Bible says to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word 
They need to test everything that even the prophets are saying. Amen? They have the testing mindset. From the beginning, we are already commanded by God to have a testing mindset to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. If anything is contrary to God's word, then it is darkness. Acts 17, 11. Acts chapter 17 and verse number 11. Look at this. There were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. Listen, this is not testing mindset. It's not to have a suspicious mind. That is different. Okay, somebody will preach. Okay, let me see. Mm, I think he will say something wrong. No, do not be suspicious. Do not be expectant of something wrong. Open your heart and be ready for the blessing of God's word. Always have a, an attitude of receiving God's word and being blessed by the word of God. And don't worry. If you are skillful in the word of God, if something is wrong, you will know it. Or if you're not sure when you get home, you can test it so that you will not be confused. And that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. It is like this. Sometimes we get it wrong. Okay, we listen to a preaching. And after we listen to a preaching, there are some things that we're not sure we write it. And then once we get home, we look at it. And then, okay, nothing is wrong. That's it. No. The Bible says, and search the scriptures daily. Reading the scripture is their way of life. It is something that they do every day. So a testing mindset is not something that is only applied when you hear something. But it is something that you apply every day. So that whatever is wrong in our lives, even every day, we can see it from the Word of God. It is a way of life. It is not just something that we employ for the moment. Because they did not hear the Word of God daily. They did not hear the Word of God from the Apostle Paul every day. It may be twice a week, twice a week, but they search the Scripture daily. Whether these things are so, even the things that they're thinking, if they are, uh, they are according to the word of God. So they were called noble. Why? Because they are in a constant state of testing everything by the word of God. Because that's the only way that we can know what is right and what is wrong. And that's the only way that we can know what to obey and what to reject. So the parents received post preaching with all readiness of mind, and they did not reject things without hearing them. Do not reject anything without first hearing, reading, and investigating. So look at it from the Word of God. You see, this is the problem today. Many of those people who actually do not like us, people who hated us, they will reject what we teach because of who we are. Ay, isang galing yan sa IBCSR. Huwag niyong pakinggan yan. Hmm. You see, what is your attitude about Stephen Anderson? Oh, Stephen Anderson is cultic. Don't listen to him. Well, not everything that Stephen Anderson is saying is wrong. There may be some things that are right. But before you say that it is wrong, and before you judge, you need to listen and you need to test. And if you don't want to go through that process, then do not listen. But do not reject without first listening and investigating because that is being unfair. That is what you call being judgmental or judging not according to righteousness. So, what is our attitude towards Benny Abante? We know that he's teaching something that is wrong, but not everything that he says is wrong. The truth of the matter is that if you will listen to his preaching beside himself, 
removing himself out of the picture, you're going to be blessed. Because he can really preach the word of God if he wanted to. But the problem is the flesh is always getting in the way. The self is always getting in the way. And he keeps on lifting up himself to the detriment of the word of God. But if he will, if he will just keep his preaching according to the word of God, then it's going to be a blessing. For that matter, any pastor who will preach the word of God is going to be a blessing. Why? Because the word of God in itself is a blessing. Amen? So, kung ka mong i-preach mo word of God pag di ka naging blessing. Actually, para safe ka nga, basahin mo na lang yung buong chapter. Tapos mong basahin, meditate upon it. Let us pray. Then definitely you're going to be safe. But, you are not a preacher, you are a reader. You see, look at Proverbs 18, 13. This is the problem of many people today. He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. So you see, when you do not listen and judge, then that is foolishness. And you are a person that should be ashamed. Why? Because as Christians, we need to be fair. That is what a testing mindset means. Being fair. Giving them a fair hearing and then giving them a chance to be proven and if they are wrong, giving them a chance to be corrected. That is a testing mindset. That's the reason why we test. is so that we can correct if they are wrong so that we can help them. A testing mindset is not a mind that condemns. It is a mind that helps. It is a mind that edifies people not to put them down or not to put them to shame. They tested everything by scripture. They did not believe every word like the fool. Look at Proverbs 14, 15. The simple believe at every word, but the prudent man look at well to his going. You see, this is what many pastors want their people to be. To believe every word. Who are these people? Simple. Or in the Bible, it means foolish. Whatever the pastor will say, they will just say, Amen. They will just believe. Why? Because the pastor will say, I am the spokesperson of God. They will say, Amen. And therefore, I tell you this and this and this. And they will say, Amen. You give one month of your salary. And they will say, Amen. You ask me before you get married, I will choose for you. And they will say, Amen. Everything that you do, I need to know. And they will say, Amen. No. What is the use of us being priests? If we need a go in between every time. We need to make a decision. Father, mother, listen to me. In your house, you make the decision. Not the pastor. It is your realm of authority. Use it, but be sure that you know the word of God so that you can make right decisions. It is not wrong to ask for counsel, but the pastor will not decide for you. You decide for your family because in the line of authority, it is God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the husband. You can decide. Not you know, pastor would want you to ask them everything. Pastor, am I going to eat at Jollibee or McDonald's? No, 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 Wendy's. Okay, thank you, pastor. Let's go to Wendy's. Am I going to drink Coca-Cola, Pepsi? No, 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 Fanta. Okay. Uh, two Fantas, please. Uh, pastor, how am I going to bite this? Uh, big, small, uh, no, swallow it whole. Okay. My. You should... Part your hair like this. You should part your hair like that. Oh, Pastor, I'm sorry. Why? Because my hair already departed. No more hair to part. You see? We need to know what is right. We need to know what is wrong. And do not be foolish to just believe everything that you have heard without testing it from the Word of God. 
But listen, they did not test things by their own opinions. They did not test things by their own feelings and not by their traditions or old wives' fables, but they test everything according to the Word of God. Amen? And you will be safe if you are, will test things according to God's Word. Why? Because the Word of God can make us perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. It is profitable for everything that we do in our Christian life. So this is what we need. We do not test things by our tradition like the Catholics do. We do not have to test things by the opinion of experts like the Mormons do. We do not have to test things according to our publication like the Iglesia Ni Cristo and the Watchtower do. We test it by the Word of God. Amen? Why? Because the Bible is the sole authority of faith and practice. No more, no less. It must be according to the Word of God. So every Christian must be a Berean. So I, I, I'm looking at these two uh, uh, versions of what, what we're going to have for our team next year. It is either a testing mindset or be a Berean. And we will vote for that. Or if you have any suggestion, of course they are welcome. But I wanted us to emphasize something that will help us to become a better Christian according to God's word. So that is what we want to do. The very foundation for the kind of Christian life that pleases the Lord is an intimate relationship with the scripture after the fashion of the noble Bereans. So we must test everything by God's word. Look at Romans 16, 17. Without the word of God, we cannot do this. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. So how can we mark people and avoid people? And how can we know that they're causing divisions? How can we know that their teaching is contrary to doctrine if we are not skillful in the Word of God? If we are not discerning or a keen, have a keen uh, discernment of what is truth and what is error. So we're not going to be put in this position. So meaning to say, we are very much vulnerable to all errors because we do not know the truth. So that's why we need to be rooted up in the word of God. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 29. Let the prophet speak two or three and let the other judge. You see? Somebody must test. Somebody must look at it. If something perhaps is wrong, maybe it is wrong. So somebody will judge. Philippians 3.17. Look at Philippians 3.17. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as she have asked for an example. So how can we know that Paul is doing the right thing? And how can we know that those following Paul is doing the right thing if we do not know the Word of God? You see, if you are a sucker for the Word of a pastor, then you will be in danger because you can only go as far as the pastor can go. But if you depend on God, there is no limit in what we can accomplish in life. That is the reason why the pastor must teach people to, de to uh, depend on God, not to depend on Him. But many, many pastors, they want people to depend upon them so that they will know everything. You see, that is the same thing as being a priest. The confessional. They wanted to know everything. And if the pastor has that kind of attitude, then he is acting like a priest that he wanted you to confess everything to him so that he knows everything that is happening in your life. Ladies and gentlemen, I may be watching for your soul, but I do not have to know everything in your life, especially so if it is something that is too personal for you and your family. But if it will affect the ministry, then by all means, let us talk about it. But if not, you can, you can make your own decision. You do not have to write everything in, in, in your diary and then give it to me so that every day I can read what's happening in your life and what is going on in your 
mind. Look at 1 Thessalonians 5.21. This is very clear. Prove all things. How many things are we going to prove? All. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. How will you know which is good among all things if we do not know the word of God? Again, it boils down to knowing God's word. That's why you can uh, throw this testing mindset away if you do not know the word of God. Hey, but pastor, you are there. I'm not always there. I'm not always here. I cannot always answer your question. And sometimes I, really, sometimes I do not even know if I'm right or wrong. It was proven that whenever we have our question and answer, you can prove using the word of God that I was wrong. And it already happened. What do I need to do? Accept it and thank you for teaching me the right way so that I can avoid teaching error to other people. That is how we help each other by having a testing mindset. But if you do not know the word of God, you will just believe what I tell you. So that's why we need to know God's word. First John 4.1 be beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. How many? All. Every. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many, many false prophets are gone out into the world and they keep on multiplying. So that's why we are living in a dangerous time. We are living in the days of apostasy. And apostasy is about to explode. Because the Bible says that our time is getting worse and worse. It's not going to get better. Revelation chapter 2 verse number 2. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience. And how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not. And hast found them liars, you see. This is a knowledgeable church. This is an empowered church. Some people stood behind their pulpit and introduced themselves as apostles, but they have proven them that they are liars. That they are wrong. That they are not telling the truth. Just imagine what kind of a church is that. But of course there is no perfect church. There is something wrong. That God saw in them. But at least. In, their, in this area of testing mindset. They excel. And they can even prove. If people are lying. Behind their pulpit. So. The mantra today is this. I am God's representative. Whatever I say, obey it unquestioningly. You know when you obey everything the pastor says without question, you are becoming fanatical. And if a pastor requires you to obey everything that he says, without question and be loyal to him without question that is being cultic and we do not want our church to be that way I'm not saying that you fight against me every time only when I'm wrong Amen. but when I'm right you obey because when I'm right I am speaking the word of God and that is something that we, you and I need to understand so this uh Ministry of testing requires teams of preachers and ministers. It is not easy for one person to do it in a church. It requires team. That is why in our church, we have preachers. That is why in our church, every afternoon, we have interactive worship service. Because we need the input of everybody in order to understand and to know what is right. Because each and every one of you can contribute. Why? You have the Holy Spirit. You can know. You can understand. You can be empowered. 
So, your input is very, very important for our church testing what is right and what is wrong. So, huwag niya kayong magkait mga kapatid. Kung ano na sa isip niyo, sabihin niyo. Kasi malay niyo, yun yung pinapaunawa sa inyo ng Holy Spirit. Amen? That's why we need to interact. You need to contribute. I may answer the question and you have a better answer or you can add something to that. Raise your hand and you will be given the chance. So that we can see the whole picture. And when we see the whole picture, then we can appreciate what God is doing in our lives more. But in the church setting, there are of course those people who are concentrating more on this. And these are your pastor and your preachers or your deacons and some of our men. That's why every Tuesday, we have a meeting. And in our meeting, we sometimes study doctrines. We test them from the Word of God if they are right or if they are wrong. Because it is, it is, these things are being taught in many churches and we need to understand if what they're teaching is right or wrong. We ask wisdom from the Holy Spirit so that we can know and then we can protect the church from error. Amen? And Lord willing, even help other churches to avoid that which is erroneous. Is that biblical, Pastor? Let's test it. Acts chapter 13, verse 1. Pastor, biblical ba yung sa kasi? In Facebook, yesterday, there was this person who said that uh, we do not need deacons until we have multitudes in our church. So the question is, how many is a multitude? <laughs> but said, but if your members are only 20, 30, 40, 50, eh, tayo yun eh. you do not need deacons because the pastor can handle it. No. Deacons are there in order to help the church grow in the Lord. Help the pastor. Because he said that if you, if you will have big deacons, then they are usurping the authority. That is because these people are not taught what deacons should do. But if a church is taught according to the word of God, there is no problem. Deacons will know their job. They will know what to do in the church. But if not, he said, he also said that because those that are being voted as deacons are those who are popular, those with money, those who are influential. So that is a testimony that your church is not a mature church. Why will they vote for just a popular person? Why will they vote for just a rich person? Why will they vote for just an influential person? When in the Bible says, look among you, people with, filled with the Holy Spirit. That is the command of the Bible. But because your, the church is immature, therefore they will choose immature deacons. And what will happen between a pastor and immature deacons? There will be constant fighting. That is why they are calling deacons as demons in the church. But if they are taught the right way, they will complement the pastor. Amen? Okay, is it biblical? Look at 13.1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manaim which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and so Lord, these people, these are people that are leading the church. These are the people that are working together in order to uh, do God's will in, in, in the life of the church. So there is a team of ministers that are working together in order to See that the church is going in the right direction. Look at verse number 2. As they ministered, they are ministering. They are ministers. There, of course, is one leader or what we call head or senior pastor. But there are different pastors in the church. Multiplicity of elders and bishops. So, uh, they, they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas, and Saul for the work wherein to I have called them. And whom did the Holy Spirit talk to? To them and to the church so that they will separate Barnabas and Saul so that they will be sent out. So the church will be successful if they will work as a team and if the church will test, will have a testing mindset as a church, then we will be free from many, many errors that are being taught in, our, uh, in, in the Chris, uh, Christendom today. Look at Acts 14.23. 
Acts 14.23 And when they had ordained them Elders in every church oh, Elders not only elder But elders Elders are Bishops are Pastors And when they had ordained them Elders in every church They ordained more than one Pastor In every church mm. And had prayed with fasting They commended them to the Lord On whom they believed But we only have one pastor No I may be the the, the pastor or the head pastor but our deacons are pastors here John is our assistant pastor as a title but all of these who are standing behind the pulpit they are ministering to you and this is the team that is working together in order to move this church forward for the Lord by the help of the Holy Spirit and if you're taking note just take, take this Acts 15 13 to 22 Acts chapter 20 verse number 4 and Philippians 1.1 1, 1. So when there is a team of ministers listen to me one man cannot just lead the flock astray Amen There is check and balance If you have something wrong in your mind you will have second thought of doing that because you know that there are people who knew what is right and if what you want is wrong, then they will go against you. And you cannot afford to do that. You see, it will be a deterrent to evil. But it will be an encouragement to do what is right. Amen? Okay, so let us look at several more verses before we end. So this ministry of testing mindset, listen to me very carefully, requires an educated spiritual congregation. That is why, listen, we are doing everything to educate you with the Word of God. You see, every Sunday, 8 to 9, we have Bible studies. 9 to 10, we have Sunday school. And then 10, 15, until whatever time we finish, we have worship service. In the afternoon, we have interactive worship service. Saturday, we have prayer meeting, but most of the time, most of our time is used in preaching the word of God and then uh, later on Wednesday will be added for a mini Bible school why do we want to do this so that you will be educated and so that nobody can take advantage of you when it comes to the word of God because if you do not know then how can you test and how can you help us if we will not educate you with the word of God and if we will not cause you by the grace of God to become spiritually matured. We have seen that elsewhere in scripture, every believer is taught to exercise this ministry of proving all things and testing every spirit. But sad to say, ladies and gentlemen, so few churches today have educated and spiritually matured members. Especially these mega churches. They are just members of mega churches, but most of the time they do not know much about doctrine. Why? Because they only go there every Sunday. And even if they were absent, nobody will even notice. So they're not going, they are not being fed according to the right amount of the Word of God that they need to have in their lives. Philippians 3.17 Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have asked for an example. I already said this. You, you will only know this if you know the word of God. Colossians 2.8 Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the word and not after Christ how can you know if it is only humanistic philosophy if you do not know the word of God how can you test it cleanliness is next to godliness Galatians 8.5 it's not even a verse it's just a quotation amen 
There's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes, we put human philosophy at par with the Word of God. Nobody, nothing can approximate the Word of God. It is way up there. And everything else is under it. And vain deceit. What, what, what are these vain deceit? Like as I have told you. They just have a meeting in one church in Pampanga. The title of uh, the uh, conference is Giving Beyond Your Limits. And there will be so many promises that God will make you uh, wealthy if you will give. Vain deceit. You are so vain if you think that Christianity is about becoming wealthy. You are a vain person if you believe that Christianity is about having what you desire to have for your life in this world. Ladies and gentlemen, Christianity is about serving God. Christianity is about being persecuted. Christianity is about carrying our cross. Christianity is about denying ourselves and giving everything for the glory of God. That is Christianity. But these people are going to make you believe that everything is about money. That everything is about us. That everything is about what we can get from the Lord. I still remember one of my preaching. The title is, How to Get More Money from God. And whenever I see that, I want to burn it. Because we do not get money from God. God will give it to us willfully. You cannot, you cannot hold God up. He knows what He is doing. Vain deceit. After the tradition of men. After the rudiments of the word and not after Christ. Everything must be after the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, we have read this. 1 John 4, 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether, whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world. We are living in the last days, most dangerous time. So in these verses, we can see a testing mindset. 1 Thessalonians 5.21, we read this. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. So we are commanded to prove all things. You and me are commanded to prove all things. So there are now so many things that you have to prove today. And we will discuss about that this afternoon. 2 Timothy 3.13 But evil men and seducers shall wax wars and wars. So these false teachers are evolving. Their style is becoming more complicated. That most of the time if you are not discerning, you will not even know that they are deceiving you. That they are seducing you. Don't you know that prosperity gospel is the devil's seduction? You are being seduced to become wealthy. Because of what you will give to God. Let's look at this. Look at the uh, vanity of this. Give more to God so that God will give more to you. I really do not see the point. It is as if you need to bribe God to give you more. It is as if God needs something so that He can give you more of what you need. This is the truth of the word of God. Listen. God gave you when you have nothing. So the first cause of giving is God, not you. And there is nothing that we can give to God that will cause God to give us. Because He already gave us. And we are just practicing our stewardship. And stewardship is a holistic thing that encompass or includes all the areas of our Life. So for a pastor, listen to me, for a pastor to guilt trip you into giving most for the church and in the church is a seducer and a deceiver. Why do I have to do that? Don't I understand that you have family to feed? But this is the point. No, 
You put God first and then God will take care of that. God has already taken care of that because He has already given you. And God told you, you feed your family, but you have given it to the church and they have nothing to eat. And then you will say, Lord, uh, what about my family? The, the Lord will answer, I already gave it to you. Why did you give it to, all to the church? But uh, Lord, there is a need. There is always a need. There will not be a time that there is no need in the church. When was the time? That there was no need in the church. When? We need, we have needs in our church. We need property. We don't have any property here in Cambodia. How much is this if they're going to sell it? $480,000. We need $480,000. So, members, come on, give it. If you're not going to give it, you do not love God. How can you live in your apartment? In our conditioned room. And, and the ministry of God has no property. You should be ashamed of yourself. Give it. Am I being right? No. I am deceiving you. We need the property. After we bought this. We buy this. We need building. After we build the building. We need facilities for Bible school. After that we need Vehicles. After that, we need the need will never stop. So you mean to say people should not stop sacrificing just for the church? How about their family? How about their job? How about themselves? They might die of hunger because you're asking everything from them. That is why in our church we give willfully according to the desire of our hearts. But you must be a good steward and a good steward is generous towards God. Not only towards God, but towards everybody else. That is how to be a good steward of the Lord. And then, worse and worse, it will become worse. During my time, the only uh, giving that I hear is sacrificial giving. During my time. Tithes and offering. Faith promise is not even uh, popular during that time. Uh, sacrificial giving. And project offering. These are the only things that I can hear. During, during uh, when I got saved. When I, when, uh, during the 1980s. Now, oh my. White Christmas. Black Christmas, Red Christmas, Green Christmas, Blue Christmas, a Rainbow Christmas, Pastor's uh, Care, Pastor's uh, Family, Pastor's Vehicle, Pastor's Groceries. Uh, my. And even if I invited, like, like for example, you have a visitor during our camp, Pastor Sirim Sara, and we gave him love gift. Uh, $250 and then we gave the family some uh, things for themselves you know in the Philippines it's like this now if you give Srim Sarah 250 you must also give me 250 because he's just a visitor I'm the pastor so in order for me to have more money I will just invite visitors every Sunday because aside from my support I can get extra on top of that that is what is happening now why? Because they will wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. We have the deceivers, the speakers, and we have the deceived, the churches who invited them. They're being deceived into believing that what they're saying is right. 2 Timothy 4, 3 to 4. 2 Timothy 4, 3 to 4. And for the time... will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, and it's happening now, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. That is why if you are a favorite speaker of a church because you entertain them, I advise you to stop preaching, please. Uy, paborito ko si ano? Si Brother uh, Cedric. 
pag siya nagpe-preach, hindi kami inaantok. Talagang sayang-saya kami. Tuwan-tuwa kami. Ano natutunan? Hindi, wala. Basta tuwa kami. Abay, huwag ka na mag-preach. Mag-artista ka na lang. Amen? Mag-comedyante ka, kikita ka pa. We should be preaching the Word of God. And the truth, most of the time, is very uncomfortable to most people. That's why if your people are, are always comfortable every Sunday, you question yourself, what are you preaching? Matthew chapter 24, 4 to 5. We're almost finished. Matthew 24, 4 to 5. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Can you see that word deceive? Popping up every now and then. Because it is our responsibility not to be deceived. And you will only be deceived if you do not know the truth. If you know original money, you will not be deceived by fake money. Because you know what is a genuine money. And if something there is not right, then you will notice it. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many, again many, not a few, shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Sige, <laughs> buloy. Si Almeda, marami yan. And shall deceive many. That's the sad thing. Many deceivers, many deceived. I hope we are not going to be one of the many that are going to be deceived. And let us end in Hebrews chapter 5. This is what we have studied yesterday, verses 12 to 14. I know we studied this, but please, again, look at it because the Holy Spirit will always impress something in our hearts and in our mind whenever we hear the Word of God. For when, for the time, ye ought to be teachers... We need to be teachers. Ye have need that one teach you again. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And are become such as of need of milk. And not of strong meat. Whenever we preach something hard. You feel bored. Whenever the preaching is going beyond the vicinity of one hour, you become uneasy. Whenever we are discussing something that is deep, you are being drawn to sleepiness. For when, uh, and not of strong meat, verse 13, for everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a babe. Listen, Christian, are you a babe? I'm not saying that as a compliment because in our time when they say that you're a babe, it means you're beautiful. It means that you are something else. But when the Bible says that, you are being indicted that you are lazy and you're not doing what you're supposed to do. You do not love the word of God. You are carnal. You love yourself more than you love God. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. You see the difference here? There are people who are intent in listening if we're studying doctrine, the deep things of God. And there are those who are not. So you will know who are carnal and who are not. Even those who by reason of use, they apply this word. They exercise, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Listen as I end. If you know the word of God and you apply the word of God in your life and you keep on applying it constantly on a daily basis and you have 
a testing mindset, listen to me, time will come that spotting error and knowing what is right is going to be a normal thing to you. If you do not know the Word of God, then you will be very, very hard-pressed or sometimes have no idea of what is going on. If what was being preached or spoken is right or wrong. But if you exercise this testing mindset and do it every time, on a daily basis, then when something is wrong, you can easily spot it. You can easily know it. It is as if you have a tutor that is pointing at those things that are wrong. So ladies and gentlemen, may I challenge you today? Church, IBCSR, can I challenge you today? Can you please put much time, effort, and diligence in knowing the Word of God, in studying the Word of God? Why? Because that is the only way that we can be spiritually protected. That's the only way that we can be spiritually blessed. And that is the only way that we can spiritually be fruitful. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, do, do not leave or go to a church that will not push you, encourage you, admonish you to really learn the Word of God. And do not go to a church where the pastor is not really studying the Word of God. But pastor, how can I know it? You write the first seven preaching, five to seven preachings that you will hear. And you will notice a pattern. And when you notice a pattern, you will know the pet doctrine or teaching of that pastor. And notice again the next five preachings after that. If it goes true to the pattern, it means that the preacher is not studying the whole counsel of God, but is only concentrating on something that will benefit maybe him or even the church only on one area. But what Paul says, we must preach the whole counsel of God. There may be some things that must be emphasized because of the need of the time, but the whole counsel of God must be taught in every churches. Listen, have a testing mindset. Shall we stand up, please?